Hello, my name is J.R. Tallman, and today I want to take you through how to create and update your chart of accounts in NetSuite via CSV import. Now, before we get into the CSV import section of NetSuite, what I'm first going to navigate to is the chart of accounts that come default within the system. If you're new to NetSuite, you can go to List Accounting and Accounts, and you will see default accounts that come pre-built with NetSuite based on the features and functionalities that you enable. Now, best practice within your account, and I'm in a development account, is to renumber and relabel the accounts that come pre-loaded within NetSuite. So what you can see on my screen is I have 46 accounts that have been pre-built into the system based on the settings that I've enabled. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is simply edit and just change the number and account name for each of the different types that are set up here. If you go to click on Show Inactives in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you'll actually see that most of these you can not even delete. So it is best practice to go into the ones that say no here and renumber and rename them. Now, once you've done that, what we'll take a look at is how to import the chart of accounts within NetSuite. I've listed a template in the description of this video, which you can use to do your uploads. So I'm gonna take a look at the template within Google Sheets here. And this is broken down into different sheets. So the main sheet that we're gonna be focused on is the chart of accounts template. The CSV import is what we're gonna be using to do the actual upload, which you'll see in just a moment. If you want to look at the field restrictions or standard NetSuite statements uh, that come with reports based on the account type, you can take a look at that sheet. But this particular sheet that we're on with the chart of accounts template, this is broken down into the different required fields that we're going to need to do the import. Now, anything in red is theoretically supposed to be required, which you'll see in just a moment. Anything in black and the field labels are optional fields, which we will populate as necessary. I do have a description of each of these fields, which you can see in row three, and then we have an example within row six, seven, and eight. Now I'm gonna do a real life example, starting in row 10, and I wanna copy that over to the CSV import in just a moment. So I'm gonna add in two accounts here. I'm gonna add in a bank account, and then I'm also gonna add in a revenue or income account. I'm simply gonna start with this external ID column, and I'm gonna name this my actual number for the field. So I'm gonna put in 1001, and this is gonna be my bank account that is gonna get uploaded. And I'm gonna use that same account number in my account number column. And then the account name, I'm gonna go ahead and label this as Wells Fargo Checking. If I have a parent reference, you can note that here. It does need to be in this particular format that you can see, so make sure it is in that format so it uploads correctly, and obviously have your parent up above when you do the import because the parent needs to go in first before it can find the child record. I'm not going to set a parent since it is optional, and then I'm going to move on to our account type. Now, the account type, we have listed the default account types in the system. This is required, so I'm going to go ahead and select bank here. Then I'm going to move on to my currency. Now with bank accounts and credit card type accounts on the left hand side, this is currency specific. So I do need a list of currency here. All the other types of accounts I do not need to list a currency for. So I'm going to go ahead and simply put USD as the currency. And then I'm going to tab over and you'll note a lot of different optional fields. So I'm going to let this just default when I import into the system with the general rate type, cash flow rate type. I don't need an inventory for this particular account. I don't need any revaluation, elimination. So I'm gonna simply tab over. I can put a description if I want to. I'll go ahead and put Wells Fargo checking. Transaction date is not necessary. This is not a summary account. And again, if you wanna list this, these are true, false, true, false. If I want to restrict it to a department, class, or location, I could. And then I'm going to put my subsidiary. Now, the subsidiary is important here because bank account and credit card type accounts are restricted to one subsidiary only. Best practice for all the other accounts is to have your parent subsidiary and then include the children, which you can see as this example in row seven. So for my example in row 10 here, I'm going to go ahead and put my subsidiary name. And again, this needs to be the exact subsidiary name. So my demo account, I'm going to go ahead and put parent company. And then again, include children needs to be false on this because it is a bank account. I cannot have additional subsidiaries with my bank accounts. Then the last two columns here are their optional fields, not necessary for my bank account. All right, I'm going to add in one other account and I'm going to do 4001. And this is going to be my subscription revenue account. And then my account type is going to be called income. 
don't need a currency. Again, it says it's required, but that's only required if it's a bank or credit card type account. I'm going to scroll over. Nothing else is required here. I can put a description. Again, I can call this subscription revenue. And then I can put that same subsidiary as my subsidiary and then my include children. I do want this to be applicable for all my subsidiaries, so I'm going to put true here. All right, so once that's filled out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these true rows in 10 and 11, and I'm going to go ahead and put them into my CSV import sheet because I only want one column for my row so I can map it easily within the import, which we'll do in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put it right there. They should match up. I could keep, uh, I can keep all these columns here. I'm not going to map them all. I can map them if I want. But for now, just to make this simple, I can keep them on this and go ahead and save this as a CSV import. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a CSV import to my desktop. All right, I have saved the CSV import to my desktop, and then I'm going to navigate back to NetSuite. And once you're in NetSuite, you can go to Setup, Import, Export, and Import CSV Records. Now, once I'm on the import assistance, I'm going to go ahead and keep the default, uh, which is the import type is accounting, and my record type is chart of accounts. Character encoding is going to be Western, since I did save it as a CSV, North America, and then my column delimiter is going to be comma, which is perfect, and then I'm going to select one file to upload, which is what you just saved as a CSV import. So you're going to go ahead and select your CSV import. All right, so I just selected my CSV import. I'm going to click on Next here. We are going to be doing an add. We'll do an update in just a moment. So I'm going to click on add here. Underneath advanced options, you can keep everything as the default. Uh, no need to, to change anything there. So you can click on next. And then everything theoretically should be mapped pretty much according to what was in the column headers here. Right? So I don't have inventory mapped, which is OK. I also don't have map my summary, which again, I did not map. Same thing with my 1099 miscellaneous or my billable expense account. Everything else is mapped here correctly. Now, if you are using internal or external IDs for some of the types, now I'm using all names, but if you are using some internal IDs or external IDs, let's say as your subsidiary, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click that little pencil icon next to the actual mapping. So if I go ahead and find my subsidiary, you can actually use an internal or external ID instead of the name, right? But I'm using my name, so I'm gonna go and click it, keep everything as default here. And I'm going to simply just click on Next. You can give this an import uh, mapping name. So I can call this uh, Chart of Account Upload. All right, so Chart of Account Upload. You can fill out a description if you want, and then the ID will auto automatically be generated um, once we save and run this. So you can click on Save and Run. And then once this is up, you will see an Import Job Status where you can click on the Import Job Status hot link here. And you will see uh, your job status page, right? And so you'll see a message here if it, everything was imported successfully. Again, I only did two accounts here, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. And it says two of two. If there were errors, you can go ahead and click on the CSV response, see what those errors were, and then re-import the data. Now, if you want to get to this job status page, you can go to Setup, Import, Export, and View CSV Import Status, right? So that will always take you back to this page if you want to see the status. And if this might be a long list, you might want to go ahead and sort ascending or descending depending on the date uh, that you're looking at. Now, if this was airing out and you need to re-import, you can simply just go back to Setup, Import, Export, and click on Save CSV Imports. And that's where your saved CSV import is going to be to re-upload into NetSuite. Now that we've actually done an import for those two records, if I go back into list accounting and accounts, I should see my checking account for Wells Fargo. If I go down below here, you can see my Wells Fargo checking account is set here. And then also if I scroll down, I can see my subscription revenue is set. So that looks perfect. So that got imported. Now, let's say you need to do an update to any of these accounts. Let's say my Wells Fargo checking account. Um, I'm going to update uh, both the account name as well as I want to set an external ID. Now, the external ID can be used for journal entry imports and so forth because this does not have an external ID. Well, it actually does have an external ID because I, I did an update. But let's say my checking account does not have an external ID. Well, what I can do, since it's 1,000, 
I can go back to my CSV import. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply add a new sheet here. Now this sheet I'm gonna delete uh, as part of the template, but this is to do an uh, update to your accounts. And I'm gonna call this internal ID. Now this is important because the internal ID is gonna be mapped on our update, and this will allow NetSuite to know which account to update the, uh, within the system. We're not gonna use the number, NetSuite will not allow us to use the number to do the update. Instead, we need to use a primary key, which is gonna be the internal ID. All right, so if I go back here, my internal ID for our checking account is number one. All right, so I'm gonna put one here, and then I'm gonna set external ID, and I'm gonna keep that as my number, because I'm gonna set that in the back end. And then let's go ahead and rename that to checking account as well. So I'm gonna call this name, call this checking update, and you'll see that take a effect. And then I'm also gonna update this Wells Fargo checking from 230. And we'll keep that same external ID that I did the initial add with. So it's not changing, but I'm gonna keep it there. And then I'll call this Wells Fargo checking, and we'll put the last four digits of the account number. All right. So once that's done, you can go ahead and save this. There's nothing else you need to do on here unless you have additional fields that you need to do the update for, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a CSV. All right, I have saved that as a CSV. Now I'm gonna go back into NetSuite and I'm gonna do another import. So set up, import, export, import CSV records. And my import type, again, it defaults to accounting and chart of accounts, which is excellent. And I'm just gonna simply select my file that I want to do an update for. All right, now that I've selected my update file, I can click on next. Now the key here is going to be doing an update, right? So instead of an add, I'm going to go and select update, and I'm going to click on next here. Now the key, again, to make sure NetSuite knows which one to update, I've included that internal ID. So it's already mapped my name, external ID, and internal ID. All right, and so when I click on next here, I can call this chart of account update, and then I can simply click on save and run. Then I can click on my import job status. And what you'll notice, same thing here, two of two records imported successfully. And I can go back to my accounting list. And if I scroll down here, you'll see the account name changed for both my checking account and my Wells Fargo checking account. Now this view does not show you my external ID, right? I don't have the customized view button up here. But if I go to reports, save searches, all save searches and new, I can click on account, and if I go to the results subtab here, I can add in the external ID as a column, right, or results. I could drag and drop that up if I wanted to. I'll go and drag that up, and I'm gonna go ahead and simply click on preview. And what I should notice for my checking account, right, it has external ID 1000, perfect. That's for my update that I did. And if I scroll down here, what you'll notice is my initial ad for my subscription revenue has 4,001, and then my Wells Fargo checking at the bottom here has 1,001. So this is important. Again, if you wanna do journal entry imports in the future, you can just reference this external ID. It might be a primary key from your external system that might not be the same as the actual number of your account, but most times it is, and you can simply just reference that uh, for any imports in the future. So again, once you rename and uh, renumber uh, these other accounts that are listed here by default, you can simply do an update to this external ID. So that concludes this particular tutorial on how to add and update chart of accounts within NetSuite. Please subscribe and let me know if you need any additional videos in the future. Thank you.